Whoa! Been a little breezy today. The tin has been moved around a little bit in my pile. So, hi there folks and welcome back, back to another episode of Michael in the Backyard. The nice thing is it's been windy today. And over the past two days, we haven't had any moisture in the ground. Let's just say I'm not going to have mud stuck to my feet. That's awesome. What do we got going on today? Well, as you guys saw in the last video, the heck just jumped out of my boat. Hmm. Some varmint was in my boat. Anyway, uh, we had, you know, I was watching the sunset at the end of the last video and keep an eye on the sunset to make sure, you know, it didn't do sunset things. You could see the glow on my face from it. Weird part, I was in the evening and I was facing east. Well, I got all the tin ripped off the building, as you saw, but uh, without the tin on the building, the building was so old, and the wood was so old, that the building just oxidized. Yep, oxidized right down to the ground. So, now it's time to clean up that oxidation, as it were. And uh, problem with it, I'm gonna, all this concrete's coming up. Big Mo is gonna attack this in this video. Yep, in this video, we're gonna get all this concrete dealt with and put into my area that I'm filling in. And uh, we got a heck of a wind tonight, this evening. Wind's been gusting all day, which is actually gonna make, let's just say the dusty part of this, you know, kind of like, see what it does? Woo -hoo! But my goal is to get all this tin out of here that I couldn't get off of the building before the oxidation occurred. And we'll, uh, wow, wind's just gusting, which is awesome. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. But uh, I'm kind of curious. This is one of those winds where you, you hear people making videos and you wonder why all that whirling and whipping noise is going on. And I can barely hear what you're saying. This is called a dead cat. And this is a wireless mic. And this is what makes the sound quality so much better. Uh, you still could hear some right now, I bet, but right now it's just, you can see it's just whoo, whipping the hair. And uh, uh, I got the boss just coming out here to check on my progress that I haven't started yet. Hey, honey, what do you think of the oxidation that happened to the building? Pretty heavy oxidation. So heavy that you couldn't just you know, it's gone and no, no amount of wax could have protected it. Once you got that tent off, it just completely oxidized. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. I got to get the tent off. I want to get it raked up because I want to get all these nails picked up so Big Mo doesn't get its tires poked. And uh, I think we can make pretty short work of this. These chunks of concrete like this, that's not a, it's not a huge chunk, right? But it's probably three foot, no, oh, four foot that way. Probably a yardstick over here to the longest point. But you know, I'm picking up pieces twice that size with those forks and it doesn't seem to care. It just says, let's do some more work. But we got a hickory nut tree and I wanna get some limbs out of my way so I can drive around it easier. I'm gonna clear up some limbs where I'm putting it over the hill for my fill. And uh, we'll go from there. But. Yeah, it looks like the uh, wind is taking care of some of the oxidation right off the cement for me. Smooth. Look at it. There goes some more of it. Just woof, woof. But uh, yeah, we'll pick it up. We'll rake it into a pile, scoop it up. That's what the agenda is for now. And I'm going to try to catch some uh, much action as I can on time lapse. And we'll have some fun with it. This will be... You know, what's happening this week right now? What happened? When did this all get happening? Started on a Monday? Yep, Monday. It's a Monday. Yeah, this was all started on a Monday, I believe. No, a Tuesday. And uh, trying to get this all wrapped up by Saturday. 
so that I can get you guys a video. And then once this cement's all out of the way, cement, cement's what holds the stuff together. Once I get all this concrete out of the way, then we got to go after stump number one, right there, that stump, and this little one over here, just on the other side, that was a result of this little bit of log in here. And uh, anyway, enough talking. Let's get some action going. And uh, yeah, let's get some work done. I'm excited because I, you know, I get to use Big Mo. What the heck? The other thing I got to do here, here's two wires coming out of the ground here that actually go to my lean to one of it went off to the chicken house but it goes back underground here and it's cut right now and the breaker is now tripped but i gotta put that back together in order to make sure i got uh let's just call it plenty of uh juice out here to plug big mo in because right now it's february february 8th or 9th and uh the reason i bring the date up yeah eighth Reason I bring the date up is because short sleeve shirt in 60 degrees, February 8th in Iowa. This doesn't happen, but it is happening. And we got about, what time was it? 4.30, we got about an hour and a half before sunset-ish, so to speak. All right. <laughs> I was just moving. I got two whole logs moved and my tire, I was wondering why it ain't steering and my tire is flat and I don't see anything through it. Part of me wonders if it was just low on air and then I over, it's got a tube in it. That could be the problem too. So we'll see if I can get a hold of that valve stem, put it up, pull it up and get some air in it and see where we go from there. Well, we got some low light conditions, so my filming's about done, but I was able to put air in that tire. I've got the valve stem fished out. This is actually a, a tubeless tire with a tube on it. We'll see how long it lasts me this go around. I think I let the pressure, looking at my tires, I think over the winter, I lost some pressure over the winter. So I'm gonna pull it around to the shop. We're gonna jazz all these up with the proper amount of tire pressure in all four corners. I don't know if I was just a little too much pressure. It may not hold. We may be, in the market for some two new tires. So I'm gonna get some sizes off of them, do some pricing. I do know the Titan tires on the back here will run you about $1,000 a pair. So this tire definitely looks like it's a little soft right now. So let's get around to the shop and uh, get some air in it, I guess. Hi there, folks. We're back on another day. Welcome back. Well, the flat tire, I was able to get it inflated. It was getting dark. I didn't want to spend too much time in the dark, giving you guys poor footage. 
to view, like not focusing on my head and doing stupid stuff. Okay, pay attention to what I'm doing here. Um, got it inflated, pulled it up to the shop, put the rest of the poundages in it. Got 17 pounds in it with the JF Eggwo, which I was kind of questioning, how did it go flat? What happened? I didn't know. Couldn't hear anything obvious, see anything obvious. There again, I didn't break out the old soapy water bottle. But it's the next evening. And, uh, yep, it's flat again. So, yeah. Duh. Look at that one. Look at that one. A little different shape. <laughs> so, we're going to bring the old JF Agro back to the rescue one more time. And while this is pumping up, I'll show you some of the progress. Now this is a tubeless tire with a tube in it. Still has some air. Last night I used my, <laughs> excuse me, my 3000 amp. Showing three pounds. <laughs> We're gonna bring her on down to Chinatown here. We'll let that thing do the job. It's up to six and a half. There we go. Now seven. The 6,000 amp one puts air in it relatively quick. And that's, now when I tackle the big giant back tractor tire with that, in an emergency, I guess I could, but it'll handle this tire just fine. Well, here's what we got. Here's what we're looking at. So I've got a hole here with a little bit of tin in it that I need to dig out and put on the tin pile. A couple of pieces of pipe here that are, uh, we're in the ground. <laughs> now they're not. So that needs to go over to the steel pile as well to be scrapped. But got all the concrete. And what I'm doing is as this piece of property here drops off, I'm just doing some fill with the concrete and the dirt and just kind of create a little more flat earth that way, so to speak. This here is gonna be, it's hard to see it out here and definitely can't tell it by looking at the camera. But back here where the lean-to is, we're gonna grade it so it's a slight grade uphill and get this all flattened off so it's all in a consistent grade. And then we'll replant grass. Now with that chicken house gone, it's gonna definitely help me park in these stalls which is awesome but tonight i'm putting air in the tire I, I worked three hours last night in the dark with the lights which worked great to get all this concrete lifted i was going to show you guys all that but we got more concrete to move and you'll see some of that which is great and uh but so i got to move that boat and that trailer and get that concrete going and then i'm going to pull the, I'm going to tonight backhoe with the backhoe part, start digging these three stumps out. And I'll bring you lot guys along for the ride on the digging of the stumps. Once I get the stumps out, concrete, a little bit of concrete left. Then I'm going to take the forks off and use the bucket and do some more digging and grading and getting all this where I want it. So we got a lot of work to do with the backhoe yet, which is exciting. I'm bringing you guys along. These forks, this has been, let's just call it strong upon strong. This thing would lift up concrete or attempt to lift some concrete that was eight foot square and try to pick it up. And uh, it would actually survive the strength of the hydraulics and not bend these forks. So those forks are still just the way I put them on there nothing gave way so that is working as intended and let's just say let's for lack of a better term forks weren't designed to go in and dig underneath concrete and lift it up and break it but that's what i did with it which was absolutely fantastic it's uh i can't i'm not disappointed so now i know how tough it is if any of you guys had doubts about my welds yep they're all still there but are any of the pins loose is the question. 
can you still rotate these pins? Ugh, those are tight. That one still moves. That one still moves. Oh, look at that. Those would come out pretty easy. These would come out, they're gonna be a little tight. But keep in mind, I had a 5 8 pin and I drilled a 5 8 hole in that. So it's gonna be tight. I thought, well, as I exercise and move it, things might, you know, stress relieve and come back around. But my goal is to take about a 30 second over reamer. Now that I've got it all, let's call it stress relieved and settled in. And I'll pull one pin out, ream it, pull another pin. It's gonna be a little rattly and a little looser, but that's okay. I want this to be where I can pull those four pins, lift this off, set it to the side and use the bucket. And then if I need that again, the forks again, bring it back over here, put it on there, put pins in, easy on, easy off, right? Right now, I know it's gonna be a little more difficult to take off a couple of taps with the old hammer and we'll be good. So where are we at? It's still pumping away. 21 pounds, I'm going up to 27. It's getting there. So what I'm gonna do tonight after dark, uh, I'll quit filming tonight at dark. I'm going to go get some slime. Now that's supposed to be a tubeless tire that has a tube in it. I'm gonna go ahead and put slime in there. In the meantime, I gotta order a couple tires. These tires are old, 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 old. It's actually almost scary. That's why I like using the JF Edgo. It's almost scary to inflate because if they blow, it's not gonna be pretty. And as you can see on these tires, I don't know how well it's gonna show up. These have a lot of weather checking in them. They're Titans and they're 500 bucks a piece. Well, they were a few months ago. There's things, those steering cylinders that I put on there were, I think a total of $700 for the cylinders and tie rod ends. I went and looked at the price at the website again for those cylinders. The cylinders are $380 a piece now. So just for the, so it's probably closing in on $900 for those steer cylinders. Now the other problem I've got, I tried to do it last night. My lower king pin, grease circs, I'm missing a grease circ on that end. That grease circ will not take grease. So I bought some grease circs at my local Napa on the way home tonight from work. And I am going to back it out, reach in there with a little drill and see if I can clean it out a little bit, blow it out and then put a new Zerk in and see if I can get it to take any grease. Uh, if it won't take grease because the bushings, I'm gonna have to do a kingpin bushing set. Or it's not a lot of play there, so it might be just to take it apart, knock the pins out, clean the dried up old grease out of the bear, bear, buh, buh, bushings, and then I'll be back in business. The kingpin sets are about $75 or $78 a side. So, but, the, key, the bearings, uh, the thrust bearings that are underneath it that all the weight sets on, yeah, probably could use a little help. That's at 27 pounds, huh? Yep, that seems about right. She's all filled up. Put the valve stem cap back on. But until I get my tires and try to slow down the leakiness of this, because it, I worked it for three hours last night with no problems. And uh, what are we at? We're down to 50%. So we'll throw that on the charger tonight. That's been sitting in my car all winter. So the fact that it's at 50, I'm pretty tickled with that. Let's fire up the beast. And I'm not gonna be doing a lot of driving with it tonight. I'm gonna be a parking and uh, parking and digging. So I'll be taking the bucket and taking the pressure off the front end. So hopefully the tire lasts tonight. I wanna be able to just get it back in here and in and out for the weekend. But I'm hoping the slime inside that tube will help plug up whatever's going on. But, uh, and I'm not worried about trying to break the beetle on the tire. That's pretty easy because all I gotta do is let the air out of it, put some weight on it, turn left, roll it, beads pop off, turn it the other way back up, roll it, the bead will pull right off. And then the nice thing is the bucket. I can just, that's one thing nice about a backhoe is it's got built-in jacks. Press it down, lift the front end up, put the outriggers down, rear end comes up. Then you can block it if you want from there for safety. All right, we're losing daylight. Sun's going down. Let's get fired up and get digging. I'll put you guys right here looking up at the old tickety-tack smokestack. 
I checked the oil last night before I started it. The oil is holding good. Power steering. Let's look. I'm gonna take a look inside here real quick. Let's see how that full that is. Because guess what? It's not leaking, <laughs> which is a good thing. I can't see it. it. Needs some light. Well, the cylinders are all dry, but it definitely must have got the rest of the air out of the system because it is low. So let's go ahead and fire it up and add some oil. Yes, sir. Okay, <clears throat> we were digging that stump out and the sun was a setting. And then a strange noise came from underneath the tractor. Hydraulics were acting a little weird. So I exited the cab and yep, Big Mo was puking hydraulic fluid. <laughs> like I had extra gallons of it or something. So let's just look around here. So you can see where I took the concrete all the way up to here. Just to give you an idea, the front of the building used to be about right here where my feet are. And you go over there and that's, that all had concrete pad all the way there, pulled all that out. Still a couple of chunks there I haven't scooped up yet, but I wanted to commence to, you know, removing stumps. 
So I did. And I started digging. And I dug a hole. That hole, I'm pretty sure if I jumped down in the deepest part right here, it would hit me about right here, and I'm 6'1". Now, it's not that deep all the way around, but we were, we were working on it. Now, the funny part is, if you watch the video back a little bit, you can see where I bumped this with the forks and where I bumped it with the bucket. And I could get it to wiggle about an inch, the inch and a half is all. Inch to inch and a half. And I've got this much removed. This thing must have a tap root the size of a telephone pole, but it's anchored in there pretty good. And I can see some of the stumps, or not stumps, but some of the roots there around the perimeter. That's as close as I could dig to it, you know, that my hydraulics would actually break and pop them stumps. Got some pretty good tall piles of dirt. I was trying to get it so I could dig you know, from one side and then that side and back and forth and have a place to put the dirt. Because once I get the stump out, I'll knock as much dirt off the stump as I can and then get rid of the stump and push all the dirt back in the hole and then proceed to go over here and dig the rest of the stump. And then once I get all the stumps dug out and moved, you know, to the over the hill land area over there, I will then pull the forks off and proceed to um, work on this thing. So I know it's hard to see, but you can see kind of a damp spot, a dark spot right there. That's where she was leaking. And if I go up in here, let's just see here if I can, that'll stay pretty sure. Oh, we barely got oil on the tip of the dipstick. So I know from a from history that the tip of the dipstick here to a half full. Oh man, I jumped that. Hold on. I dumped it in some nastiness up on top here. But I do know that from there to halfway to the full mark is two and a half gallons. And then from the, pretty sure it's, how big are my jugs? Hang on. How big are my jugs? Well, I don't want to tell you guys wrong. Because I buy it in five gallon pails now, and I bought one so far. And this was, uh, oh, that's only one gallon. One gallon, four quarts, will get you up to halfway. So from where it's currently at, it's going to take two gallons. So I lost... And I dumped about half of one of these in it to get it to that point. So I lost, let's call it two and a half gallons. I saw something on the ground here. Hey, dead Mike. Oh, here we go. Or dead Mike. Where'd he go? What? <coughs> oh, got it. Sorry about that. Dropped this on the ground the other day. It was in the cab of the tractor. So the good news is... I didn't pump it dry. Bad news is it it uh, it's broken. Pretty sure it popped a hose. And it's right down under here. It was dripping right up under here. There's a hose that comes down from underneath the pump. And that's where it was running from. So I made an executive decision because both my bottom king pins down here don't take grease. The king pin bearing underneath here that takes all the thrust and the weight of the tractor, they don't feel awesome. This tire won't hold air. I mean, it holds air, but is that holding air now? By golly. <clears throat> what the heck? It went flat overnight, and now it's holding air. I was going to actually slime it to get me through a little further. But I think the better play is, and I gotta move that tree. Dang it, tree's in my way. I can move that with the Jeep maybe. But to pull these two boats out, I wanna back this thing around in here so that I can, I wanna pull the bucket off so it's out of my way. I wanna raise this all the way up out of my way if I can. I think I'll pull this off first. But what I'm saying is I'm going to get to the pump and the hose and whatever. 
I've got to pull the entire front end of this tractor off, which includes the front protective grill, which I can straighten at that time, the hood, the weight here, the weight on the side, the weight on the other side, the weight on the upper side, and the bottom weight. Maybe not the bottom weight. We'll see. Bottom weight has to come out if I'm going to get at it from the bottom. But that will allow me to remove the oil tank, the oil cooler, the radiator, and that will give me access to the hydraulic pump. And once I'm that far in, I'm going to go ahead and replace the belt because you got to do all that to replace a belt. And I may see how I could possibly strap in another belt in there behind all that mess in order to have another belt ready to go in case the belt breaks. We'll, we'll examine that when we get in there. But then I'll replace whatever hydraulic hoses I run into on this situation, I'll replace. Because I don't want to just replace one hose when the other hose could go at any time. Even though it's not leaking, let's just do a little preventative maintenance if we can. But uh, I think that's what I'm going to have to do to Big Mo to get him operational. Good news is, silver lining, I've got this done so far. I did all this work in February. Well, the good news is February is when I wasn't planning on doing it to start with. I was planning on doing this, you know, April type time frame to do what I just did here. So this is going to give me a, another month or so. I'm ahead of the game is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm pretty well, well ahead of the game in my opinion. So if I can do all that work on Big Mo, minimize some downtime through the summer, because if it took me a month to fix it in April, then I'm into May and June. I'm losing summer months to do everything I want to do here. So, and it does take a big hole. And you guys tell me if I'm doing something wrong because that's a that's a heck of a hole down there. I'd jump in there, but I'm not sure I could get back out too easy. And uh, but maybe that's why you know, stump grinders are so popular because the stump grinder could have taken that a little bit below ground and not caused all this dirt to be dug. The other thing that's fine, fun to find out is how much clay that I have just below the topsoil. You go down about a foot, foot and a half, and you hit a lot of really good clay. And it's some hard stuff, and I'm pretty sure that's what's in my pond. Um, this is very dry down here. I think once moisture hits it, it'd be like modeling clay. We got some lime here that was put underneath with the footing that was, or the footing, the concrete that was poured. Anyway, so yeah, this brings me to a screeching halt for a minute, but there again, fixing the tractor. I knew I bought an old tractor. I knew it was going to need some work. I've, I've now have <laughs> about 30-ish hours that I've put on it since I've got it, and I'm happy with those hours so far. And I've done, if I was paying an hourly rate, I'd have paid a lot of money. If I was renting this for $100 an hour at 30 hours, that's $3,000. That's almost recouped half of my purchase price. And I knew when I got it that, you know, overall, it's in better shape than a lot of them I looked at uh, for the money. The cool part is I put this pump on or hoses on, fix all that underneath there, new fan belt, and I'm planning on putting a whole new set of tires on it, uh, which is going to cost me about $1,400. But by that time I get all that done, and I'm going to change the transmission fluid, I'm just gonna get all this maintenance that I need to get done done a little bit further along than it currently is. And then I've got something that should give me quite a few hours of service. Quite frankly, if I get 35 more hours of service at $100 an hour, and for whatever it costs to rent one of these, I've got my money back. And then another 20 hours, I've got my repairs back. So 50 more hours worth of, so one week's worth of work, basically, I've got my my payback. And then anything that's after that, which I've got a lot of hours of work to do around here, I'm money ahead. So that's how I'm, let's just say justifying it. You can justify anything if you figure out how you want to play the money. But this, I'm looking at what I'd have to rent to do the work I'm doing versus what I'm doing. So anyways, there we go. And the inconvenience of not having something here 
and having to rent it, go get it, drag it here, drag it back, and rent it multiple times because I've got a lot of work I'm doing around here that's going to take a piece of equipment like that. Is it the ideal job for everything? No. A bulldozer and an excavator would have been of that caliber, that size. I could have got a lot more work done, probably a little bit easier. And uh, But the nice thing is this is here whenever I need it. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this video up. I appreciate you guys following along. Keep your comments. Keep your uh, coming. Keep your uh, thumbs up coming. Subscribe, share. Let's grow this some more. Uh, more to come. Obviously, I'm going to be doing a lot of work on that, on Big Mo. He's going to be uh, center of attention for a while here. But I've also got to get, excuse me, back on. There's Big Blue. There's that 70s boat. I'm calling, I'm calling that green boat, that 70s boat. We got to do a fuel pump on the cobalt here. Put it on the water again this year. And then we got two more boats here that I got to get running. And then I'm yanking the engine out of them because the boats are absolutely toast. And let's not forget about right here. This is the, is it the Alumacraft? Let me step over the tongue of this trailer. I'm trying to remember, this is Alumacraft. That has the big dent in it. Yeah, Lumacraft. With the 90 horse Merc on the back. Oh yeah. And this big old wrinkle in the side here. Which they say can't be fixed. I can fix it. I'm 95% I'm confident I can bring it back. So that'll be fun. Alrighty. Well... Interesting. Uh, thanks for watching. If it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And remember, give your projects an hour a day and you'll make a lot of progress. This is Michael and I'm out. Be good to one another. Where's my, oh, look here. There's my, oh, there he is. Sorry, I hope I didn't make you guys dizzy. I got a little woozy there. He's uh, ready for me to throw the frisbee for him. All right. Thanks, folks. And goodbye. I know you're excited. Let's do this right here. Hey, right here. Come here. You gotta sit right here. I know you're high, high strung. There you go. Can you sit? Hey, can you sit? There we go. Let go. Let go. You ready? You ready? Are you ready? Let's go. Oh, you gotta get an angle on it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Ha <laughs> ha. Made up the ground. Good boy. Good boy. Right here. Come on, right here. There you go. Wait. Right here. Mert. Over here. Right here. Can you sit? There you go. There you go. You're a champion. You're a champion. Let's do this. Yeah. Why'd you shake it? You caught it. You usually don't shake it unless you miss it. Come on. Right here. Come here. Lucy wants to try at it. Lucy wants to try at it. There you go. You give her one more. Yeah. See if you can get that one. Yes, you can every time. All right. Let's go. Let's go.